Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a really important law when it comes to respiration or breathing, which is called Dalton's Law. Now, if you wanna understand the physiology of breathing, that includes diving physiology or aviation physiology, you must understand this basic law. So Dalton's Law states that the total atmospheric pressure is the sum of the partial pressure of individual gases. Now, you may not understand what this is referring to now, but it's a very simple concept. Basically what it's saying is that the entire atmosphere around us has a particular pressure associated with it. And we can call this pressure, we can measure it in millimeters of mercury, for example. So at sea level, the total atmospheric pressure around us is 760 millimeters of mercury. Now, what this is actually referring to is the fact that if you were standing there at sea level, if you were to take a column of air directly above you, that all the gas particles that are making up that column of air above you is exerting some form of pressure, and that pressure equals 760 millimeters of mercury. Now, Dalton's law states that in order to get this 760 millimeters of mercury worth of atmospheric pressure, you simply take all the individual gases that make up the atmosphere and add them together. So for example, 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to A plus B plus C plus D, for example. So we just need to know what's A, what's B, what's C, what's D. Let's take a look. So, first of all, let's look at the most abundant gas that's in the atmosphere around us. That gas is nitrogen, which we can write as N2, and it actually makes up 78.6% of the entire atmospheric gas. That's a fair bit, right? Let's take a look at the next, which is oxygen, O2. And that makes up 20.9% of total atmospheric pressure. Next is going to be carbon dioxide. CO2. And that makes up this measly little 0.04%. And then finally, we've got all the rest, which is, we're going to refer to it as trace gases. And that's just going to make up a little bit more than 0%. So it's going to be negligible in this conversation. All right, so we know that A, nitrogen, B, oxygen, C, carbon dioxide, D, or the trace gases, we just have to add them together. Now that's a percentage and that's an actual unit of measurement. So we need to do some slight changes. 78.6% of 760 millimeters of mercury is actually equal to 597 millimeters of mercury. So you can see 78.6% of the total atmospheric pressure is 597, and that's nitrogen. We refer to this as the partial pressure of nitrogen. The partial pressure. I think I wrote it up here, right? The partial pressure. Let's do this for the rest of them, right? For oxygen, 20.9% of 760 is going to be around about 159 millimeters of mercury. And for carbon dioxide, it's going to be around about 0.3 millimeters of mercury. Let's not worry about the trace gases. So if we add those together, they should be around about 760 millimeters of mercury. Now again, what we've just calculated is the partial pressure of each of those gases within the total atmospheric pressure. You might be thinking, who cares? What relevance does this have when it comes to the physiology of breathing, whether that be diving or aviation or just at sea level? So let's take a look. Let's go back to this column of air. This column of air that's sitting on top of us has that pressure. You might ask, well, if it's 760 millimeters of mercury, how come I'm not feeling this pressure? It's because we're born into it. So of course, we don't feel that pressure around us. But Let's just say this column of air was attached to a syringe barrel and plunger, and we decided to push down on that plunger. So, 
let's just draw it up here. In this scenario, we're in that tube, that column of air, but now we've pushed the same amount of gas down into less space by pushing down. Now what we've effectively done is we've increased the atmospheric pressure because of something called Boyle's Law. I've done a video on Boyle's Law. If you, there's an inverse relationship between the volume of a container and the pressure of the container. So if I decrease the volume, I've increased the pressure and that's what's happening here. I've just decreased the volume and I've increased the pressure. Instead of going from, so this is one atmosphere, I've now made it two atmospheres. So let's just say, this is synonymous with going deep diving, maybe gone around about five, maybe 10 meters, we're going down, down, down into the water. That water's exerting pressure upon us. That's what's happening here. Now Dalton's law states that the total atmospheric pressure is the sum of the partial pressure of the individual gases. So now if we've got two atmospheres worth of pressure, it's no longer 760 millimeters of mercury. We're gonna times that by two. So 760 plus 760 is 1,520 millimeters of mercury worth of pressure. All we need to do to find out how much nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and so forth is within this is 78.6% of 1520 will give you the partial pressure of nitrogen. So effectively the concentration or pressure of nitrogen has doubled as you increase the total pressure. And this is important when it comes to another law called Henry's law, which talks about gas exchange. Watch my video on Henry's law to understand how partial pressures apply when we talk about gas exchange. Hopefully this makes sense.